the grouchy nerd. All right, quiet down, knuckleheads. It's time to take another look at a new hero pack for Fantasy Flight Games Marvel Champions. This time we're looking at Wolverine. No, that's Wolverines. James Howlett was born somewhere in the neighborhood of 1885 in the Canadian wilderness, though no one is sure of the exact year, most especially James himself. His mutant powers began to show themselves one night when he witnessed the murder of his father and attempted abduction of his mother, when bone claws extended from his hand. He killed the intruder and maimed that man's son, who was also James's half-brother. He then went into hiding on the run from the law and his revenge-seeking half-brother and found a job working at a quarry under the assumed name Logan. Though he was also given the nickname Wolverine by his fellow miners, because he was small and quite hairy. His powers continue to develop, leaving him with enhanced strength and a rapid healing factor, which also allows him to age incredibly slowly. This healing factor allowed him to survive being abducted into the Weapon X program, which grafted his bones, including claws, with adamantium, an indestructible metal, and wiped his memory. Since then, he's fought in several wars, been a samurai and an assassin. He survived the bombing of Hiroshima, worked with the CIA, joined the X-Men, joined the Avengers, had a son, lost his adamantium, went feral for a while, got his adamantium back, went to hell, met his clone, and died, but wouldn't you know it, he came back. Let's take a look. On his hero side, Wolverine has twos down the line in his stats. He has the X-Men trait, five cards in hand and only 10 hit points, but after the player phase begins, his healing factor will heal two damage. That's awesome. He gets a fifth of his health back at the beginning of every round great. On his alter ego side, we've got Logan. Trades the X-Men trait for the mutant one, gets a recovery of six, and his hand size goes up by one. And as part of the setup, sneaked. search your deck and discard pile for the Wolverine's claws upgrade and put it into play. So, Logan. Just Logan. Like Adele or Cher. Whatever. That recovery is insane. It's the best in the game. It's six, and it needs to be guy survived an atom bomb to the face. Wolverine's claws have the weapon trait and permanent keyword, and as a hero action, exhaust them to choose an attack event in your hand. Take damage equal to that event's printed cost to play that event, ignoring its resource cost, and that attack gains piercing. So once per round, you can take damage to play an attack event. So instead of using resources, you're going to be using your health, which you're going to be slightly replenished with every round. And of course, this also adds another stupid wrinkle to the permanent keyword, because the setup step happens last, after your mulligan. So if you draw your opening hand, and you mulligan away three cards, and you draw three new cards to replace those cards, and one of them is the adamantium clause, and then you look through your deck to put them into play, you just don't get to? There's no cost on these things. You can't put them out any other way. That's stupid. And look, I'm even going to acknowledge it might be on purpose because they do still have a resource on them. So maybe there are times where you just don't get to use your claws. They're just going to be a dead card in your hand. Look, I'm not a big house ruler. My whiskey addled brain can barely keep the regular rules straight. But the way I treat permanent keywords, if you're curious, is I treat them as an extension of the identity. So I put the identity aside and any permanents that come with that identity also go aside, and then I do all the setup stuff, and then I put it out. Jubilee, as played by Jubilation Lee, is Wolverine's signature ally. She has ones in her stats and the X-Men trait. She costs two, has two hit points, one thwart and one attack, but as a response after she enters play, pick an enemy. Wolverine and Jubilee's basic attacks will be plus two against that enemy until the end of the phase. That gets her attack against that enemy to three, it gets yours to four. We're about to see a card that's gonna give you a static boost to your attack, so that's actually getting to a five. Mean Swing was reprinted in this deck, so if you exhaust your adamantium claws to play Mean Swing instead of getting an event out, you might be swinging at an eight for your basic attack. Next is Adamantium Skeleton. It's a two cost upgrade that gives Wolverine four additional hit points plus one to his basic attack. And that basic attack gains piercing. That's obviously incredible. It gets his hit points up to 14. So you're gonna really be able to take some damage to play those events knowing that you've got a pretty hefty pool to pull from here and it's gonna be getting replenished bit by bit or you dip down to Alter Ego and you recover for that six. Plus you have now two piercing attacks. If you use your Adamantium Claws to pay for an event, that attack is going to gain piercing, and now this gives your basic attack piercing. So tough statuses, 
what tough status is. Berserker Frenzy is next. It's a two cost upgrade with the condition trait and a hero response that allows you to draw a card after Wolverine takes any amount of damage from an enemy attack. But it also has a forced response which makes you discard Berserker Frenzy when you flip down to Alter Ego. That automatic two heal every turn means that Wolverine's gonna be able to stay in hero form and take more abuse as a hero than most other heroes. Plus, Berserker Frenzy doesn't exhaust when you use it, so if you get hit by the villain and two or three minions, you're going to draw a card off of each of those if, if you survive that many hits. But do try not to look directly at the art. You just want to kind of keep it, keep it in the peripheral, you know, just kind of don't make direct eye contact with it. Just really Charlie Cox it up. I Got Better is going to let you delay that flip down to Alter Ego a little bit longer. It's a four cost upgrade with the superpower trait. As an interrupt when Wolverine would be defeated by an enemy attack, instead hit your hit points to five, ready, and discard this card. It doesn't get removed from the game, it just gets discarded, so you're going to have the chance to play this multiple times if you need to. Now, being able to afford playing it multiple times if you need to, that's a whole other story at four cost, but it is a superpower trait, so deft focus just for this card might be a pretty good idea, though he does have a few other superpowers, but I would bring it with this card in mind. Logan's Cabin is a location support, which you can exhaust in Alter Ego to shuffle one Wolverine card from your discard pile into your deck. It's a pretty standard, if a little boring location support. I mean, we've seen this style of card in a bunch of other heroes, but that doesn't mean that it's not good. I mean, you want to see your hero cards more times, so Putting them into your deck's great. Two copies of Berserker Barrage is next. It's a two cost attack event that deals four damage to an enemy. If that attack defeats an enemy, you can take two damage and repeat this attack. It's fine if there are no minions out. It's pretty good if there's at least a minion out that you can kill with this and then take the damage and, and do another attack. But if you can manage to kill several minions, it doesn't say limit on that repeat. So if you have the health and you have the minions, you can chain together a bunch of these. Of course, the odds of that happening in True Solo outside of Ultron, not great. Then we get two copies of another attack event, Slice and Dice. This one costs three to do two attacks, each three damage. Three resources or three damage to yourself to do six damage back is fine. The fact that you can target two different enemies with it makes it quite a bit better. If you don't use your claws and take the damage and you use resources and you use aggressive energy to pay for it though, that plus one to the damage on the attack is going to go to both of those attacks, similar to Ms. Marvel's and Biggin, so that will make it three for eight, which is much, much better. I hope because that's how I've been playing it. Next is two copies of Lunging Strike, another three cost attack event. Deal eight damage to an enemy. If you paid for it by exhausting Wolverine's Claws, it gains overkill. And if you paid for it using Wolverine's Claws, it also has piercing because of that. So now it's got piercing and overkill on eight damage. That's fantastic. Next up is two copies of Track by Scent, a two cost thwart event. Remove three threat from a scheme. If this was the last threat on that scheme, draw two cards. If you had asked me which hero was going to get a hero specific card that was basically clear the area but better, I don't think Wolverine would have been in my top 10 guesses. But that's what it is, and I mean that in the best way possible. It's clear the area but better. And it's even better in true solo when you're not having multipliers put on all that threat. Ugh. Last, we get two copies of Regenerative Healing, a one-cost superpower event. As an action, either heal four damage or discard any stuns and confuses on you. Really, really good. You're going to be inflicting damage on yourself. You're going to be taking hits from the bad guy. The two health at the beginning of each round is good, but it's not always enough. And dipping down to Alter Ego to use your Regenerate is a real tempo killer. So being able to just heal four on the fly for pretty cheap is incredible. Plus, it's just an action. It's not an alter ego action. It's not a hero action. You can use it in any form. 
the bad stuff. Wolverine's obligation is past demons. It allows you to flip to alter ego and then either exhaust as Logan to remove it from the game or take a stun and confuse to discard it. As the most basic obligation we've seen in a while. Exhausting to get rid of it sucks, but taking a stun and confuse and still being exhausted because you defended or whatever, that sucks even more. Although if you have that regenerative healing in hand, you can use that to clear both stun and confuse. So that might be the better option given given what your hand might look like. Omega Red is his signature nemesis. He has the brute trait and eight hit points, and he does one thwart and two attack, but when he attacks, he's going to do one damage to each character you control. He also has retaliate one and steady, so he's gonna punch you back every time you hit him, and it takes two stuns or confuses to stun or confuse him. Hurting Wolverine's friends seems like a terrible idea, but it also seems very effective in this case. If you can't burn him down, he is just gonna shred up your allies. His side scheme is the Carbonadium Synthesizer, which gets five threat and an acceleration icon. And while it's in play, Omega Red cannot be defeated. Well, that certainly complicates things. So the eight health is generally not a problem for Wolverine, but having to take care of five threat first? That very much is, and he's gonna be hurting your allies each turn. The side scheme is gonna be adding threat to the main scheme each turn. What have you gotten yourself into? Death Factor is an attachment we have two copies of. They attach to you, and they have a forced response that gives you a damage after your turn ends. Waste a recovery action to get rid of it. So you could conceivably ride this out for a while. You are still getting one health back more than you're losing, but there are two of them, so that... It's not good. It's not very good. Last is a treachery called Tentacle Strike, which stuns you and gives you a damage or four damage if you're already stunned. It also does that if it's revealed as a boost card. Jeez. Moving on to his aspect cards, Wolverine came with an aggression deck. First up is Psylocke, as played by Betsy Braddock. She costs four, does two thwart and one attack. She has three hit points and the psionic and X-Men traits. She enters play with two psionic counters, and when she attacks, you can spend one of those counters to do an additional damage to that enemy and confuse it. It's very similar to the Iron Fist protection ally, who does the same thing except he stuns instead of confuses. But this, in aggression, where you don't have a ton of threat management and Wolverine doesn't have a ton of threat management, going down to Alter Ego and recovering can possibly lose you the game with threat. If you can guarantee that the villain is going to skip that scheme and let you safely flip down and use that six recovery, that's great. Then we get Sunfire in the style of Shiro Yoshida. He does one thwart, two attack, has two hit points and the X-Men trait, and he only costs two. But if you pay an additional energy resource, he'll also discard an enemy attachment with a hero action or response on it. Man, this guy is great in certain scenarios. I mean, putting him against the, the crossbones scenario with all the experimental weapons coming out that you can get rid of if you spend certain resource types, this guy can just get rid of them just by entering play. Three copies of Warrior Skill is next. It's a two cost upgrade with three warrior counters, max one per player. When your hero attacks, spend a warrior counter, that attack deals an additional damage. Cool thing to note on this one, it doesn't exhaust when you use those counters. So Wolverine who can pay for uh, an attack, he can hurt himself for an attack, and then he can use his basic attack, could potentially use all three counters all in one round. Then we get three copies of Out of My Way, a two cost attack event that deals three damage to an enemy. But if that enemy has the guard or patrol keyword, increase that damage to five. Now I hate those keywords a bunch, but unless I'm playing a specific scenario where I know those keywords come up a lot, or if I'm playing somebody like SPDR whose nemesis has both the guard and patrol keywords, I don't know if I'm running this over another event on the off chance that when I have it in hand, I also have a minion in play, and that minion has one of those keywords. Next up, three copies of Precision Strike, a one cost attack event. As a hero, deal two damage to an enemy. If this attack defeats that enemy, heal two health. I wanna like this one a lot. I love cards that heal you so that you don't have to flip to Alter Ego to use your recovery. You can just heal as you're fighting. However, at only doing two damage, it can be a little tricky to set this up just right. Although things like 
uh, Cyclops' exploit weakness or paying for it with aggressive energy or using warrior skill to boost that damage is certainly going to make it much easier to make that two heal come off of it. Weapon X is a one-cost basic location support, which can only be played if you're a mutant. It has an alter ego action, exhaust it, and take a damage to discard cards from your deck until you discard an identity-specific card and add that card to your hand. I don't know if it's just my near pathological fear of advance and shadow of the past, but these cards that let you look for your cards at the expense of burning off other cards in your deck and therefore depleting your deck faster and therefore getting you an extra encounter card more often, I don't like them. Wolverine gets a team up card with Colossus Fastball Special. It's a one cost attack event with the aerial trait. I think this is actually really usable in true solo in an aggression Colossus deck. Not so much Wolverine, but Colossus can bring out that Wolverine ally and keep him in play for a while because the ally heals as well. So that's going to be a lot easier to have him out and then get this card and then play it. And then you're not using Wolverine's two consequential damage to do that attack. That's pretty good. However, in Wolverine trying to work this out with your basic Colossus ally, those pieces lining up doesn't feel like it's going to happen very well. But I think in Colossus, it, it really could. Then we get three copies of a Justice card, Command Center. It's a one-cost location support, max one per player. After an ally thwarts and defeats a side scheme, exhaust it to deal two damage to an enemy. Ugh, that's a tough one. It's got to go on an ally, and it can only work on a side scheme. Those are, those are some pretty hefty qualifiers. Last is another basic ally, Longshot. He's got the X-Men trait, and so must your identity to play him. He does two thwart and two attack, and when he makes that attack against a non-elite minion, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If that card has a boost ability icon, defeat that minion. I do think the boost ability icon is becoming more frequent. I feel like that is happening more, so he might be very useful and he might be getting more useful as the game goes on. Look, you can play a leadership or justice or protection Wolverine, but you're going to be doing yourself, Wolverine, your country, whatever god you do or do not worship, a disservice. He's an aggression hero. He can do crazy amounts of damage, like defeat both stages of the villain by turn three crazy events. As long as you have them in hand to play, he can usually get at least two attack events off in a turn. He can use his health to pay for one and then resources to pay for another one or two. So fluid motion, which boosts your attack after an attack event, is finally worth taking a look at. Using multiple fluid motions to boost your attack several times has always been kind of more tricky to pull off than was worth it, but Wolverine can actually do it pretty reliably. He heals, he's got that insane recovery, he's got a pretty cushy hit point pool, especially if you throw endurance into the mix, so doing something like play toe-to-toe, -to -toe, which only costs one resource to do five damage and get attacked, but it only costs one resource to do five damage, then you use your claws to pay for lunging strike or something, now you've done 13 damage, plus you've boosted your basic attack if you've used fluid motion on those, and then whatever, you swing and do four or five more damage, or you use smash the problem to deal with some threat that's built up, because that is his one big weakness. Threat management, not great. Mean Swing was reprinted in this deck, and I mostly understand why he's got weapons from the jump and you don't have to go searching for them, so Mean Swing is always viable, other than the fact that you have to exhaust the claws to use them, or to use them for Mean Swing, so that, yeah, that's kind of, yeah. But if you can manage to use a couple of fluid motions and you've got combat training and you've got your skeleton out and you use mean swing, your basic attack is going to be anything but basic. Ugh. That was cheesy. Make sure you cut that out. All right, that's all I got for Wolverine. If you like me, tell your friends. Press the buttons. You can buy me a coffee in the link in the description. If you don't like me, whew, I get it. I get it. I can get a little nasally when I get excited and I've been told I'm not very pleasant at parties. Now get off my lawn. The Grouchy Nerd.